Hi, I'm Steve with Tronics Fix. Previously, we disassembled this PS4 Slim, and today it's time to put it back together. All right, our PS4 Slim is down to just the disk drive left, and so the next thing that needs to go in is the metal plate right here that has the heat sink on it. So we're gonna make sure we didn't lose any of these pads. This pad right here is on the motherboard, so that won't be a problem. So we gotta make sure all these cables are out of the way when we put this in, but we basically just need to go ahead and move it straight in here like this, and then just set it right down in there like that. So that's in there. Now we need to put reinstall the two screws here, two screws here, and two screws right here. So we'll do that next. Now that all those screws are in, the next thing we're going to want to do is clean off this thermal paste and clean off the thermal paste on the APU chip as well and reinstall Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste, which is a better quality thermal paste than the manufacturer. So we'll do that next. We have just two regular Q-tips here and then we also have a bottle of 99% isopropyl alcohol that we can use. You can use uh, other just rubbing alcohol if you'd like to. It doesn't have to be 99%, but 99% um, has um, the least amount of water in it, so that's what I like to use. Now, as you can see here, this thermal paste actually is fairly um, wet still, so it really isn't too bad. Any of you that watched my teardown of the Xbox One S. Notice that the thermal paste was fairly dry on that already, but this thermal paste is pretty wet still, so I imagine this will go quite a while before it actually needs to be replaced, but since we have it apart already, we might as well replace it. Now I'm gonna clean off the thermal paste on the heat sink. Now keep in mind, this is just a, with a dry Q-tip right now. Now I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the alcohol on it. And then I'm just gonna go across it like that. And then the chip itself, um, I'm gonna go across it like this. And that just gets it nice and clean for us. You want a really nice clean surface on this so it gets a really good contact with the thermal paste. Now that we have that, I'm gonna put on just a little dab of Arctic Silver 5. There are lots of kinds of thermal paste that you can use. We prefer Arctic Silver 5. We've used it a lot and had really good success. So we'll go about that amount. You can see about how much I put on. Different people put on different amounts. And well, you can see that there's our other thermal pad there that goes right here. And then there's a thermal pad over here and a thermal pad right here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up the back of this and then we're gonna lower it down in there like that. Get this cable out of the way. Okay, feels on. it feels like it's on there nice and solid now. Okay, now we need to install the APU clamp that goes right here. So that's what we'll do next. And it's gonna go on like this. Okay, that is on there how it should be. Now that the clamp is installed, we need to connect our Blu-ray drive connector right here. Just push it in, make sure it's fully seated, and then we're gonna put the plate over the top. Make sure all the cables are out of the way. They are. Now we will lower the plate fully down. And the plate is fully down where it needs to be, so I'm gonna reconnect these cables. They just push into the connectors. This one, you gotta make sure that the lock is flipped up before you put the cable in. And then the cable goes in, down, the cable goes in and then flip the lock down. And then another push in connector here. 
and one more push-in connector in the back here. Okay, now all of those ribbon cables are installed and fully seated in their connectors. So the next thing we need to do is install all the silver screws and all the black screws. Okay, all of the silver screws and black screws have been installed. I'm gonna give you guys, show you guys kind of a close-up of where they all go. So there's a close-up of kind of the bottom half and there's a close-up of kind of the top half. Gives you an idea of where the screws go. Now we're going to route this Wi-Fi antenna. It's gonna go under this tape, under this tape. Now this, when I took it off, I, it just tore the tape right in two, so that's fine. What I'm gonna do is connect it right here onto the Wi-Fi connector there, and just it just pushes down. And then Route it under this tape. Okay, there we go. And then just push the tape down so it'll hold it down. And now that has been routed. And this, I will give you a close up of the routing so you can see exactly where it goes. Okay. So that is the top plate, the screws, and the Wi-Fi antenna for the top. This is the hard drive enclosure where the hard drive goes. We need to reroute this Wi-Fi antenna, and then we also do need to put in this large, um, long screw. So I'm gonna route this Wi-Fi antenna first. I'm gonna kind of flip up this tape right here, and then we're gonna put this in here, and it goes right here to this one that's labeled B. Then I'm gonna drop the tape down, and that'll keep it there out of the way of the power supply. And then we will put in this screw, that one long screw in the middle. Okay, and now we're ready for the power supply. Now before you put the power supply in, remember that we do need to route this Wi-Fi antenna cable. So we are gonna Push it onto the connector labeled G, and then we're gonna route it through the channel for it. Okay, and that is routed now. And keep in mind there is a channel all along the back side of this for that cable. So we do wanna make sure it stays uh, pretty close in there, right where it goes, because we don't wanna get it jammed up in the power supply. And then we also do need to make sure that the power supply connector on this side is connected. So I'm gonna connect that now. And that's just a push in connector. So that is now pushed in. Now let's make sure this gray antenna wire is where it needs to be. Okay, and it is. So now we just need to fit the power supply in and then push it fully down. And so it's all the way seated. and it is now all the way seated. So that is where how the power supply should look. And now we'll put in the four screws on the edge and the one screw in the middle. Keep in mind this plate does need to go on the power supply. There is kind of a cutout on the power supply showing where it goes, so that should be easy. So just these two screws for this. And then these four Phillips screws for the edges. Okay, the power supply is now installed. We do need to install this one screw that goes on here. Okay. That one is now where it goes. Before we go any further, we do need to remember to put in the screw that goes on the other side that made it hard to get that power supply out. That screw goes right here. So we'll do that next. Okay, now that part's ready to go. Now it's, in time, it's time to install the case. Now we need to put the top cover on. 
So what we want is to grab the top cover. We need to make sure that the Sony is in the front. And then we put the back on first and we slide it on. And you may need to get your fingers under the back and just make sure it's all lined up under here and slide it that far, that, that way as far as you can. And then you'll just wanna take your fingers and kind of push this way and snap it down on the front. So now the front looks good or the top cover looks good. Now, now we need to install the bottom cover. Now what you'll want to do is make sure the buttons are going to be lined up with where the button um, board is right here. And then we're going to lower that on and then we'll slide it backwards. And then we'll just push down on it. And there we go, it's installed. Now we need to install the hard drive. So we're going to take it and just push it right in the hard drive slot. Make sure it's pushed in all the way, seated correctly, and make sure the hole lines up right here. So next we'll install the hard drive screw. If I can get to it. And then we also have one more screw to install, and that is the black screw that goes right there. That's what was under the warranty sticker. Now that's installed. We will go ahead and put the hard drive plastic back in place. And you can see it's gotta be, there's uh, kind of little, little uh, clips in there you need to make sure are on there correctly. Now that that's on, our reassembly of the PS4 Slim is now complete. Our PS4 Slim is now completely reassembled with new thermal paste. Keep an eye on our channel because we'll be testing this PS4 Slim for how hot it gets, how loud it gets, its power consumption, and that sort of thing. So that'll be one of our next videos that you'll be seeing on our channel. Thanks again for watching.